Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Unbreakable Success. I'm so grateful for you being here once again. You are definitely going to enjoy and learn a lot from today's episode. I have a very special guest. Her name is Melanie Benson. If you don't know Melanie, you're definitely going to want to stick around and find out a couple ways to contact her. And she even has a free gift for you today to help you generate cash fast in your business. Now, Melanie is a business optimizer and she has a real gift for helping mission-driven entrepreneurs thrive in their small business. She's what you would consider a revenue strategist. And what she does is she really helps you uncover what may be derailing you from more productivity and progress in your business, which will ultimately free you up to scale your influence, scale your income without having the overwhelm that unfortunately many entrepreneurs wind up enduring unnecessarily. So she is the author of Rewired for Wealth. She's the founder of Money DNA. She's the co-author of Entrepreneur.com's Startup Guide for Starting an Information Marketing Business. And her tips have been featured in a whole bunch of magazines like American Express Open Forum, Bloomberg Business Week, Woman's Day Magazine, Parenting Magazine, and the University of Phoenix Alumni Magazine. She's on the executive team for Women's Speakers Association, and she's council chair for the Association of Transformational Leaders. Yes, she stays busy, and she does a lot, which is all the more reason uh, that we really need to reach out and thank her at the end of this episode for giving so much information and so much of our time, her time to help us grow our businesses and uh, really expand our reach and impact. So without further delay, let's welcome Melanie to the show. You're definitely going to love this one. Melanie, thank you so much for taking me up on the request to be here. How are you doing today? I'm fantastic, and I'm so excited. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I know there's, we've talked uh, before. We talked for a while, but I'd, I'd love to get an idea or give our listeners some idea of your your day-to-day. What's the normal Melanie Benson routine uh, been lately? <laughs> Well, you know, I work out of my home office, so luckily I have a very short commute, you know, the whole five steps. Uh, And, you know, that wasn't always that way, so that was one of my intentional outcomes from having my own business. Uh, You know, every day is actually a little bit differently. I use something called time blocking, and I am a huge fan of giving myself huge chunks of time to dedicate Mm -hmm. to certain activities. So Mondays are typically very open. I may pick up an interview or, or here and there, but mostly it's project day or fun day. Okay. And then, you know, I'm I'm Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays working in the business, meeting with my team, working with clients, and then Fridays are another one of my open days. Yeah. I might do a little bit of business in the morning, but pretty much Friday afternoons are like, I'm out, I'm doing whatever I want to do, and um, I purposefully and intentionally design my business to really support the way I'm wired because I need a lot of freedom. I need a lot of open space to be yes. massively creative, to be able to respond to things I wasn't planning for. And really, it makes me better at what I do when I'm not feeling like up against the, the wall with time. Yes, I, so. l- I love that. I love talking to people. I love talking to entrepreneur, entrepreneurs specifically to see how they structure what's going on, especially with you. I know you have so many things going on with your own podcast and your clients and your, uh, you know, and, and your business that you're dealing with online constantly. So yeah. I love. Yeah. And I have you. a couple of leadership roles too. And if you're not careful, those things can become full-time jobs yes. too. Yes. So it's constantly finding a little, you know, how to plan for those chunks to dedicate fully to all your different responsibilities and projects and opportunities. Beautiful. Well, thank you for that. Listen, I, I'd love to hear, um, I know, you weren't always in the entrepreneurial business the way you are right now. I know you worked for a while in, in corporate with Motorola for years. So can you talk to us a little bit about how that transition started for you? Because I'm sure you know, probably more than most people, that so many entrepreneurs start out in you know a, a typical industry, if you will, working at 95, sure. and then at some point make that transition. How did that look for you? Yeah. And how did you make it work? Yeah, I think we call ourselves corporate refugees. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, my journey was kind of a, a, what I, what's called a moving away from scenario, you know, and, and I use a lot of neurolinguistic programming tools in my work for rapid transformation. And so I learned this concept early on that when, when you're moving away from something, you know, versus moving towards something, it has mm-hmm. different motivation. For me, I was running as fast as I could away from a role in a company that just didn't inspire me. Mm. 
Mm. And I, I was, I, I actually had uh, several jobs before then, and you know, I had the programming called "Play It Safe," go get a real job, make sure that you can pay for y- your life, and you know, have stable income. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of my my dad's uh, best heartfelt advice for his daughter, wanting to make sure she was always okay financially. So, um, you know, I was working for Mobile Oil for a while, and then I worked for Motorola, and I just never really felt like I fit. And I never really knew how to take my superpowers and apply them in a very structured environment. And I will say I was very lucky. You know, there was a lot of innovation and creativity in the uh, environment I worked. I often got tasked with being on uh, what's called customer satisfaction circles, which was taken from the Japanese total quality uh, circles that they invented in the 50s. Yes. And so I had a lot of innovation in my role, but somehow I never quite felt like I fit. And inside, I, I was kind of slowly dying. Mm. I was getting a lot of chronic fatigue, and I was uh, exhausted all the time, and I, I just didn't really have that drive. And so I started to look at what are the ways in which my gifts would translate to something outside of a corporate environment. And that's when I stumbled into the world of coaching. Okay. And it's kind of a weird, funny story. Um and, and I think you would resonate with this, and hopefully as you're listening in as a listener today, you, you, this will spark something for you. You know, when you set an intention for something, you have to be open to where the signs and the, and the, the guidance comes from. I was mm-hmm. literally walking through a bookstore before all the bookstores disappeared, <laughs> and I was, I was kind of, you know how they have those books on little rounds at the front of the store, yes. they want to yes. showcase certain books. So I cut it a little close walking by this book, I was heading towards... Uh, probably the leadership section or personal development or something that was on my mind. And this book literally toppled off the table and landed Mm -hmm. at my feet. And it was a book by Cheryl Richardson, Take Time for Your Life. And quite honestly, Aaron, at that time, I had no life. I was on the road all the time. I was working for someone else. I, I, you know, was, I was in two different schools. I was in my master's program and I was in a project management certification program at the same time. (laughs) And, you know, my, my job at the time for Motorola, I was, I was literally on the road 300 days a year. So I didn't really have a life. So the idea of taking time for life meant I had to find a life, and I was very intrigued by this book. (laughs) And I started reading it, and I'm like, oh, my God, this woman is brilliant. All of these things are the things I want to be doing because I really had a gift to getting goals met in record Mm -hmm. time. And I could see for the first time how to package it in a way that felt so much more aligned with the, the essence of me instead of who I was having to be to make it in the corporate world. And so I, I created a transition strategy, and I uh, th- it's a much longer story, but we'll just say a lot of pieces came together very uh, elegantly all at mm-hmm. once to expose to me the world of coaching. And I got the company to help me do some advanced training, and I created a goal. I was going to be out within a year. I stuck to my goal, and that's how I got there. Wow. But I, I honestly say my first couple years were really tumultuous. They were quite terrifying. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea what I was in for, but I'm so glad I didn't and that I didn't know that it was going to be more challenging because it made me do it. I had You have to leap mm-hmm. if you want to get where you want to go. Yes. It very rarely, big, big, amazing things very rarely come from playing it safe. And, and that was a huge learning for me. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I, I, love the, I love where this conversation is going because I can imagine that at that point when you're making that transition, a lot of what you were dealing with and learning had to do with changing your mindset. And mm-hmm. I know I, I, I know we I want to get to this conversation today yes. about that you're gonna share with us about optimizing your money mindset for millions. Um, but I'm curious, what is now let's go to now. What okay. is what is mindset to you? How do you explain mindset to people in the context of how it affects them being able to find success and achieve the, what they want to achieve. How does mindset play into that uh, from your perspective now? And then we can kind of see where maybe some of your speed bumps were that. along the way, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So the way I explain mindset is it's, it's, it's what's basically going through your mind at any given time when you're making decisions, mm-hmm. when you're um, deciding what's going to get your action or not. And it's, it's a collection of ideas, beliefs, thoughts, and, and ultimately the story that you weave together about 
whatever you know it is. We're applying it to money and success today, but it applies to relationship, it applies to health, it applies to basically any uh, area of our life. And so to me, what, what I have found is that our mindset is dictating the action we take or don't take. And we all know that the action we take or don't take is directly influencing our success. And so people turn to me who are not able to really take themselves to that next level. And I've got people who are maybe newer in business and just starting out all the way from people who've been in business for years and years and years, and they keep hitting the same wall. And that's because our fears and our limitations, our belief limitations, start to build these filters. We might think of it like a pair of glasses or Mm -hmm. sunglasses even. And everything we see is filtered through that lens called, this is my beliefs about money and success. Mm -hmm. And often if you're not getting the results you want, but you're working so hard and you're trying all the right things, it's because somehow you're bumping up against your belief of what's possible Mm -hmm. and you are not willing to do the action that would directly correlate to the result you want and you block yourself Mm -hmm. and sometimes you call that self-sabotage uh we we might call it like living in your limitation and i have proven this over and over and over again even when people think it's because of that out there it's because of the industry it's because of nobody understands what i do uh you know we can sometimes blame it on uh you know like the economy right we can find a lot of different things out there but ultimately, if you're not where you want to be, it always lands back in the mindset. Yes, yes. I think it's. I think one of it's one of those. To me, I found it's one of those situations where, when you talk about um, beliefs and how limiting they can be, I find that a lot of times it's because what you and I are discussing as beliefs, when we're in it, we call it reality. Yeah. And those words, they they often get overlapped. We don't think of them as you know, what we're seeing and what we believe is limitations, we believe them as it's our reality. This is what reality, this is a fact and that's a fact and this is a fact and this is why things are the way they are. But if, I, I think for me, and I'm sure you're gonna get deeper into this, when we're willing to recognize that what we're calling reality is simply just a belief. Um, that's when things mm-hmm. can start to move. So. Uh, I'm sure you've had some of that during your transition. Tell, tell me some of the some some of the big nuggets for you that that might be helpful to people listening to make some big leaps in the time we have today. Yeah, well, I love that you're asking this question because just because I teach it doesn't mean I'm immune to it. It just means my my tool set is activated quicker, right? <laughs> Human beings are you know we we associate with what happens in our mind. It's just mm-hmm. the way we are. My first big uh, awareness of mindset came when I was about 18 months into running my own business and I was tapped out like I could not make more than $1,000 a month. Mm. And for some people, depending on where you live, that may be good. Mm. I live in Los Angeles. It's not good. (laughs) It's coffee, right? (laughs) Yes, it's coffee. It's like a a couple of meals out. No, it's but it it really wasn't sustainable at that Mm. level. And what I discovered very quickly was that I was basically rationalizing all kinds of things I wasn't willing to do because I had beliefs about them. And most of them, for me, stemmed around marketing and sales. And I don't know if you've run into people who struggle with this, but I would say it's about 80% of the reason why entrepreneurs are struggling with money is that they're... Uh, really uncomfortable with the process of marketing and selling. Now, for some people, it's because they're really creative. And um, for me, it was because I had built up all of these limiting beliefs about what I thought it meant to the world. Like if I was going to have a marketing conversation with somebody or a sales conversation, that Mm -hmm. they would think I was icky or that I was pressuring them or, you know, all of your self-worth stuff would start to come up for me. And what I discovered very quickly is, is that I was living in my limitation instead of my possibility. Hmm. Wow. And when you live in your limitation, you have a lot of excuses and rationalizations for why you're not able to have the success you want. And I had a mentor who called me out on it and helped me break free of it because he started to teach me how the way I was wired, how every story I told, every belief I had, every 
every fear, every thought basically was was basically anchored in a pattern that I established at some point in my childhood mm -hmm. and that I didn't have to live with it. I could do what's called rewire it and I could actually program my mind to uh, love the activity of marketing and sales. Mm. But I had to do a lot of reframing. And these are the things I now work with my clients on as I teach nice. them how to, how to reframe the things that they're stuck around. And I literally broke through a huge barrier. And instead of struggling and wondering where the next paycheck was going to come from or the next uh, speaking gig or the next consulting opportunity, all of a sudden, I'm making six figures in just under nine months. And it wasn't because I really like, had some new innovative offer. It was because I was willing to do things that I rejected mm -hmm. because I shifted my confidence and my belief in what I was doing. And... I was basically taking action that I'd been resisting for years and years and years. So everything for me was on fire instead of, you know, the struggle and telling the story over and over and over again, how I'm broken, I'm struggling, I'm suffering, and I'm sick yeah. of it. Yeah. And I was sick of it. But you have to be willing to do different things and you have to shift the story you're telling about it. Yeah. And that's what worked for me. And, and I will say that at each stage of my business, I had to tackle new areas of my mindset mm -hmm. because we're programmed for the exact level of success we have right now. Yes. And yes. if you want to get to a new level, you have to create a new set of beliefs, a new set of uh, thoughts. You have to be willing to elevate your stories to match where you're going next. And mm -hmm. a lot of uh, reasons why people stay stuck at the level they're at and they never get past six figures or they never get past the mid six figures or they never break seven figures is because they have a mindset that says it's too hard, mm -hmm. I don't know how, um, it's scary, I will lose something important to me. So we wrap up all of these limiting beliefs into our ability to take the actions that would get those results. Mm. <clears throat> Beautiful. I love it. That's that's really great stuff. Now, you you work with a lot of clients that, that deal with these issues and these, these blocks that they have. Yeah. What are... <clears throat> How would you say, how does a subconscious play into that? Like, what are some of the ways that you see that express itself um, for, for the listeners out there? How, how, how can you explain to them that, you know, things will show up this way and this is what you need to be aware of? How would you ex explain that to them? So do you mean like, like an example of how yes, we know? Could, we're in a, yeah, yeah. If you okay. could. Sure. Well, so my story is pretty common, but let me give you a couple other ways. It's I call them sneaky saboteurs mm -hmm. because sometimes we just live our life and we think, yeah, this is my life. Mm -hmm. But someone else can look at it and say, okay, so here's where you're stuck and why, because you can see patterns. And I had a woman who came to me and her pattern was she uh, never had time. She never had time to do the things that would actually translate to more money. For, for some reason, she was always running out of time. Hmm. And so her belief was there was not enough time. And if we, when we dug deep, deep, deep down inside, what I discovered was that she actually gave her time to her son, who was a, a high needs person. He had a lot of challenges, he had a lot of things he was struggling with, and she felt like if she wasn't giving her time to him first and rescuing him from whatever situation he was in, mm -hmm. that she was being a bad mom. And so her sabotage game was, uh, I give all my time to my family, and then what's left, ne there's never enough to go around yeah. to do the things that would actually help me achieve more. I had another uh, man who I was working with who had this fear that if he made his business more successful, he mm -hmm. would have less of him to go around mm -hmm. and that he would lose his family if he wow. became more successful. And so w one of the really fascinating things is, is the subconscious is, is basically designed to protect you from bad decisions. Mm -hmm. It wants to be safe. It doesn't want to get hurt. So the subconscious for my client was, well, don't do those things that will actually make you more successful because deep down inside you, you're afraid that yeah. you will lose something that you value. And so that's what we do. We, we have this fear of what we think might happen and it causes us to hold back or maybe uh, sabotage or procrastinate or uh, maybe make other things more important that are safer. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And they will keep you from actually achieving more success financially and, you know, in terms of achieving more goals. Mm. Oh, I have one more. Do you, oh, can yes. I share one more yes, real quick? Yes, please, please. Okay, so this is something, and not everybody's familiar with this term, but I'm wondering if you've ever heard of the term the tall poppy syndrome. No. Okay. So, uh, and I think this might be in Australia, but I could be okay. wrong. There's, a, there's fields where poppies grow. And so if there's a tall poppy, because the farmers want to keep it all looking beautiful, they will chop off the mm. poppy that's yes. grown taller. So the, this is described as what many people do when they're afraid of what might happen if they shine and they're taller, brighter, bigger than their peers or their parent or their spouse. Mm -hmm. And we hear all the time of celebrities who kind of outshine the other partner and then you're, they're getting a divorce. Well, yes. unconsciously, we have fears where I'm afraid if I'm seen for my real gifts and I stand out, somebody may come by and whack me. You know, they, yeah. they'll criticize you or, I mean, you know, maybe even like physically take you out of the game. And it's, a, it's not necessarily a real fear. It's a projected fear because your subconscious mind is trying to protect you. And this is a really common way, especially women, will hold themselves back because mm -hmm. they don't want criticism. They want love. They want respect. They want to be accepted. And so it's what's called the tall poppy syndrome where if you really go for it and you really put yourself out there and somebody doesn't like it, you may actually get rebuffed in some way. Mm -hmm. It all I've goes, had quite a few clients with that one. I'm sure. I'm sure. It's. It sounds like a lot of this. You know, if, if we're going to try to simplify it as much as we can, because there's so many layers to this. Yes, it really but is. <laughs> if we really try to simplify it as much as we can, it boils down to to a fear of something, whether it's yes. that that fear that we're going to let, as you discussed earlier, letting a family member down, or that fear of being noticed too much, and now you you know you risk being excluded from the pack and from the herd and from acceptance. So in a lot of ways, it seems like from what you're saying, it, it sounds like recognizing what that fear is. And a lot of times it's a hidden fear, which we rationalize as, as we discussed earlier, a reality. Yeah, and, it can also be logic. Yes. So here's something interesting that a lot of people don't realize is your logic mind is actually one way your fear disguises itself to mm. get your attention. Hmm. So oftentimes... Our logic mind will say, we can't do that. We don't know how to do that. We can't afford that, <laughs> right? Like, we'll run through a lot of very logical, rational reasons why something won't work. And I always bring people back to this. If you really, really want something, mm -hmm. you have to decide you want it. Uh, for me, I wanted my business to be successful. I did not want to have to go back to a job. To me, that was just like a knife in a heart moment to think yeah. about having to go back to something I didn't like and didn't make me thrive. And when we are thinking about how we want to get past something, if our logic mind, if we start to look at our path and we go, okay, I don't know how to take logical steps here. I don't know how to not lose money. I don't know how to do this. Logic mind says, you're not ready. Hmm. But that's not where greatness comes from. Yeah. It comes from being unreasonable, from being unrealistic, from taking big, crazy steps that don't make sense to probably anybody, let alone yourself, and then having support to navigate the steps that you're taking when you're playing a game that's much bigger than anything you've done before. And that's where coaches come in. Yes. That's where mentors and masterminds and you know whatever support system you have for yourself. But I wanted to really um, talk about Logic Mind for a minute because it's one of the most insidious ways our mindset plays against us mm. because it's very convincing when your logic says this isn't going to work or I don't know how or whatever your logic likes to do. I can't afford it as a huge one. Wow, I, I love that. Now, how, let's say for the sake of argument, the listener, you know, your listener is listening right now and they're saying, you know what, some of this feels familiar to me because I do yeah. have responsibilities with my children or my spouse or I do have you know lim limitations to how much money or resources I have access to so I don't even know how I could grow my business or they sense something that as you said logically it's keeping them from making the money that they want to make and getting that financial freedom that they want to have so that they can do more of what they love where do they start I mean how do you mm -hmm. say okay if we can hold their hand and say, look, 
just let's start here. How would you begin that conversation? Okay, so, you know, I like to play with the ands instead of the ors. Mm. So what was, what I heard in that was, I don't know how to grow and be successful or and, and be responsible to my family. Mm. So it's like, the, the, what, what happens for a lot of people is they're like, okay, I can have this or that. Mm-hmm. Like I was working with a woman who is the breadwinner in her family. Uh, her husband works with her in the business and they had four children. And she's like, uh, and well, so her fourth one was on the way at the time. And what the conversation in her head was like, um, I, I can either be a good mom or I can actually grow this business. And so she was kind of in that play it safe yeah. mode. And I, and I said, look, I don't know what the answer is in this moment for you because we were just getting started. We hadn't even done our strategy session yet. But what I said is there's an answer in the and, yeah. but there's limitation in the or. And so here's what I think is really brilliant about a lot of um, opportunity to work with coaches is you may not know what the answer is in the moment, but if you're committed to the outcome and you say, so there's a way for me to be responsible, to make sure my family is supported, and to grow this business successfully, you will find the answers. Yeah. So for some people, it may be you get a line of credit. For someone else, it's, okay, I take my business to a certain level while working in my other business, but I will build my reserves so that there's a safety net for us. For someone else, it's, uh, okay, so um, like one of my clients we worked on, he had an assistant who literally tackled all the stuff during the day that he couldn't do, and then he would work on the business two hours every night and six hours on the weekend. There are always ways to do it, but what happens is when the or leads yeah. the conversation. Okay. And when you're committed to an outcome, you do you figure it out. When you're committed to the safety or the excuse or the whatever, that's what tends to hold you back. And by the way, these are all possibilities, but maybe your path is that you work longer in your business, you know, in the career path, and it takes you longer to build your business. There's no wrong way. It's just don't give up on the outcome because you don't see the path. Yes. Yeah, I, I love that because the, the or almost makes an assumption that something must fail. Either, yes. either I will succeed with my family or I'll succeed in my business or I'll succeed, you know, by being accepted by my peers and people that are watching me grow. Uh, or it, 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 it's almost like you have to sacrifice one or the other, but I love that concept of, you know, look for the end. Like how can I have this and that? And yes. if you assume, if you just make the, go into it, making the assumption that the answer is there, you'll work towards finding it. I love that. I love yeah. that. So, Right. I, I'll give you a perfect example really quick, and that is the person who was worried about losing his wife mm-hmm. and his family. So what is the way you grow your business where your family gets just as much attention and time as you want to give them, and you can become more successful? So when we look for the and, new solutions always reveal themselves. Wow. I really I really love this conversation. It's, it's, it's so... Uh, it's very pragmatic, but when you're in it, and I think we've all been there, and I'm sure you you were there because you've grown into this over these years. You know, when you're in that bottle, you can't necessarily read the label, so to speak, which is why it's so <laughs> right. it's, it's so brilliant, like you said, to to seek out these coaches and resources, like you know your podcast or shows like this, where you just get these perspectives, like, huh, eh. and that little the light bulb can come on, and you can realize that there are more answers out there if you keep searching for them. So, well, let's talk about your, um, I know you had something that you were, I'm, I'm, pro- I'm going to put, I'm pushing towards the, the uh, something we were probably going to save toward the end, towards the end. That's but okay. I want to, I want to really get into, I know you have a resource that you want to share for people. And yeah. I think this may be, because we're in the midst of this conversation, it may not be a bad idea to share what it is. So as people's minds are churning now, um, they know they have something else to, to grab from you as a resource moving forward. Yeah, so one of the things that seem like it could be really valuable because we're talking about money and mindset is uh, basically expanding the way to bring fast cash in. Again, this is a mindset. And I and sometimes knowledge is what we need in order to expand our thinking. I'm one of those people, if I can see it, yes. <laughs> then I know where to go, right? Yes. And so I, I acknowledge that 
seeing possibility is a great way to expand possibility. So I created a list of 10 ways to rapidly inject cash into someone's business. And they work pretty much for any stage. There's a, at least one or two on there that would work at any stage of business growth. Excellent. And some of them are ways to bring consistent cash flow in, bigger consistent cash flow. And some of them are just like, I just need to get some cash in the door for this month. And it's called Rapid Cash Strategies. Uh, there's 10 of them, and each of them either I've personally used or I've worked with a client on using, and they got tremendous results. So they're all proven approaches. And it's a little bit like a checklist format. I, I say what it is and how to use it, and then I'll give you some tips along the way, and you can get that at rapidcashstrategies.com. Nice. And, um, you know, the mindset comes in with this because I think sometimes in order to do bigger, more productive, more profitable things in your business, it helps to know what's worked for other people. Yeah. So consider this your list of shortcuts so that you don't have to go figure it out next time you need some cash in the door. Nice. And what was that website again? I'll, I'm definitely going to link it up in the show notes. But uh, Sure. So Rapid, rapidcashstrategies.com. Very nice. Now, I love it because we're, you know, we're, we're now, we've got to the point where we're discussing mindset um, but also recognizing that there is there is strategy behind this ability for us mm -hmm. as entrepreneurs to increase our cash flow. And we have to have both because I, I think sometimes, I know for me, historically, sometimes I can get pigeonholed into thinking, OK, I need another strategy and another strategy. And ooh, that one was good. So I need another strategy. And then the mindset kind of gets put on the wayside and next thing you know, your brain's all jumbled up because you're so busy trying to figure out which strategy is going to be better. But on the other side, if if we only if we only seek to expand our mindset and what's possible and ignore the strategies, then we may not be taking full advantage of the toolboxes that are available to us. Uh, what, what's a way that that you are able to balance both? Because I know I love your podcast because it is such oh, thank you. it is it, I'm, you're welcome. I'm serious. It is such a wonderful balance of strategy and mindset. And it's it's so natural. Um, what do you find is for you works best to make sure you're you're constantly growing in both in your mindset mm -hmm. and the strategies that you're building? Well, you know, it's funny because this is so automatic now. I've been in business for 15 years, almost yeah. 16. So, so many of these things become automatic, a, a way of being. But um, we have strategies that are tied to specific outcomes we want. So if we want to grow our list by a certain amount, we uh, have a strategy. And we have strategies that we design to achieve new goals. And we have strategies that are always in motion because they're part of what we call our foundational lead generation, our foundational, uh, what we call you know brand presencing. We have things that I teach called um, authority boosters. And these are ways of just positioning your brilliance and your expertise and you know the thing you do out there in the world. So that all is strategy. But what I noticed where the mindset comes in, it's the being willing to be flexible, adaptable, and graceful with change. Mm. Mm. So um, what I know about myself is you give me a roadmap and I work the roadmap. But historically, I wasn't always nimble and adaptable when things needed to change because I liked predictability. I liked to be able to yeah. walk a path. So... For me, one of my big growing areas uh, in all this time has been to recognize when we need to adapt, when we need to modify, and you know I like to call optimize something because it's not working as well as it could be, or it stopped working altogether, and that's mm -hmm. where mindset comes in. And you know, again, at every stage of growth and evolution, you know, the set of thinking changes dramatically. You know, in the beginning, it's like, how do I just make some money? It's like, yeah. what do I, what is my thing that I will do that will, you know, and who is the client that will, will most resonate with that? And then that game changes once you figure out how to make money to now, how do I, you know, get more money coming in consistently? So it's not up and then down. And then the next stage is, all right, so how do I scale what I do without me having to work more in the business? So each stage requires you to think dramatically different than the stage that got you to where you are now. It's yeah. so one of my signature sayings is, you know, you can't get where you're going next the same way you got to where you're at right now. Yes. It requires new thinking, it requires new mindset, it requires new strategy. And so those will always be partners. 
and you know your where your mindset is if what you're doing isn't working. That's yeah. really the bottom line. If what you're doing isn't working, your mind is in the wrong place because you're focused on something that's that's not delivering the right results. That is so brilliant. I love that. Everybody listening, I want to make sure you caught you caught the, the beginning of what she's saying here, that you have to be adaptable and flexible and graceful with change because you know it, it, human nature to, to, to attach ourselves to something that we think either is working or should be working and get resistant to changes but if you know if you're able to be graceful and just expect that change is going to be needed at some point and when it does and when it is roll with it and be and be adaptable to the situation constantly because wherever you're at <clears throat> whether you're struggling or whether you're doing pretty well and you want to kick the game up a notch it's all change is going to be at every stage yeah. so I, I really love that and I uh, appreciate that so let me do this. I want to get into our, um, it's, it's funny how time flies. We're like 34 minutes in already. It's hard to believe it. I appreciate so much of this great value that you've given us. But let me uh, roll into a couple of our hot seat questions. This is the virtual mastermind for business and life. So sure. <laughs> we're going to throw you on the hot seat. I feel like things are getting hot right now. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, we're always friendly here. Um, first question I have is what is... I'd love to know a struggle that you had, something with, whether it's a recent struggle or a distant past struggle, something that was really a challenge for you in your business and how you were able to either are or were able to adapt and overcome it. Because we've all had something that we've had to work through. And it's, I think it'd be valuable for people to learn from how well you've yeah. done. Well, I'm trying to pick one of a billion <laughs> out of a barrel here. <laughs> Um, you know, we, you call this podcast unbreakable. And, and so, you know, I think the one that might actually have the most value is to, to know, what do you do when you're on the brink of failure? Mm. Uh, I went through a phase, and again, I guess this kind of ties directly into this idea of being graceful with change. Yeah. Uh, at a point, I wasn't graceful with change. And we, you know, had gotten to a point where there were a lot of moving parts. Uh, I had a team of like 15 people. And... Uh, I was focused on uh, a next phase of our growth and evolution, and um, the person who was managing the operations side of things was was kind of like having some challenges at their home mm -hmm. and wasn't saying straight out what was happening, and so they lost sight of some big things. Mm -hmm. And next thing I know, we were in a perfect storm where the financial crunch had happened, uh, you know, people's credit cards stopped working overnight. Yeah. Basically, credit limits were gone and yeah. people were not able to make payments. We ended up with like something like $40,000 worth of uncollected um, billings that month. Wow. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking, okay, what, what do we do? And, and so, honestly, I went into panic and I wasn't strategic. My mindset tumbled. Um, and part of that was because I didn't have the mindset for where we're going. And I hadn't taken the time to really strengthen the systems and the infrastructure of the company for what was next. And I was over relying on a team that really wasn't capable of growing with me. Mm. And it was a really huge learning for me. And it was painful. Um, I lost a lot of business. Uh, I lost a lot of traction. Uh, a lot of really uncomfortable and quite challenging things happened over that next year. But ultimately what happened was I strengthened my mindset yeah. And I regrounded the processes and systems that we use to grow our business for the business we were becoming. And, and it took a little bit of trial and error. It took really recognizing where were we going and what was the team I needed to go there instead of relying on a team I had built to sustain what we had before. So it was very humbling. Um, it still kind of wrenches my gut a little bit yeah, to think that's, about. Because uh, it didn't have to go the way it went. Yeah. And I really wish at the time that I hadn't understood more how important it was to continue to do my own daily grounding, my own you know personal care so that I was stronger mm -hmm. when that turbulent wind hit. Because a lot of people went through those challenging times. A lot of people ended up filing bankruptcy. A lot of people recognized how uh, tenuous their business was because when you make big money, it's very easy to hide behind the amount of money you're making and and be exposed when you have a bad couple of months. Yeah, and right. I think um, the guy that wrote Profit First talks about that. I can't remember how you say his name, Mike Malchak, Mike Machakovich, something like that. Okay. Sorry if I butchered his name, but 
uh, he talks about how important it is to understand you know the balance of revenue and profitability so that you don't get caught off guard and so anyway that was probably one of my biggest challenges I've had so many over the years yeah. but it really came back to recognizing that your mindset has to keep growing with you and your strategy has to keep evolving if you want to keep going to the next level Wow I, I love that um, thank you so much for sharing that I know that's got to be something that's that's raw and deep but I think it's so valuable for people to hear that no matter where you're at you have to be evolving you have to be making sure number one I love that you said um, taking care of your your self-care first mm -hmm. because I I think we all know every, everyone listening has to in their own way recognize how it can be to get so busy doing the things that you know you skip your time whatever whatever your particular way of care is whether it's reading daily or meditating in the morning or in the evening or whatever or it is exercise, that, or or whatever. exercise all of it diet all those things if it's easy for some of those things to slip by if thing if a things are going well or b if things are just really busy so i love that you acknowledge that you know it, it's really important to keep up on on taking care of you and making sure you're ready for the next hurdle that's coming because there's always going to be something coming around the corner um but it's it's a big it's a big help if we anticipate it by taking care of ourselves first so thank you yeah can i just say one more thing about yeah, that please. Just, I, I think part of um what happens for people is um, for me at least at that moment I didn't feel capable to deal with what was happening because I was exhausted mm. and again it goes back to I don't know if you ever caught my episode on uh, recognizing the signs of burnout but I, I was experiencing one of the levels of burnout and I didn't recognize it because I wasn't taking enough time for me and I wasn't really listening to my intuition I was letting too many people dictate yeah. what was important to them as my priorities and so it's just a really it's a pivotal moment for any of us when we realize we're sacrificing way too much of ourselves for others we really yeah. have to keep grounded in in ourselves too thank you so much for sharing and i appreciate it well let's let's flip this this script on this to a better side what okay is, what's <laughs> something that's really really working for you right now and it can be in business or it can just be in life what's something that you well you can sit back and smile and go yeah you know what this this has been working and this is something you know people may want to try well my first instinct was to say that speaking you know it's kind of a old school strategy to grow your business yeah. it's the one thing that works tried and true for me um, and I'm very deliberate and selective about where I speak because I want to make sure the audience is is a good match and that there's value that I can provide to that audience because <laughs> some audiences are like I have no idea what you're talking about because it's just not their their yes. world and, and so it wouldn't land well but kind of a, a sister to that because you asked it could be personal as well you know I think through every area of my life I made a decision to operate from grace when I started going through that really challenging time because I wasn't feeling very graceful in how I was tackling it at the moment. And I, and I really respected the people I knew who were so graceful no matter what was going on. And so I decided I was going to learn how to handle the challenges as well as the, as the, the everyday from a much deeper place of grace. So uh, grace meaning I always have space for what's important to me. Grace meaning I handle difficult situations with colleagues or clients with, with a graceful heart. Um, you know, my relationship is so much better than anything I've ever uh, experienced before because I, I've become more graceful in, in honoring our differences and our unique mm, areas, <laughs> a.k.a. <beautiful>. challenges. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and and I've, I'm a much graceful, more graceful leader because I stopped blaming my team for all the things that didn't go right. And I, and I really learned to, you know, lead from a place of grace. And so it changed everything. And you may have a different word that works for you, or you may have a standard that you know is missing as you're listening in. It may not be grace for you, but just being willing to have the same conversations from a much different place and really honor each other, I kind of think the world could use a lot of this right now in every area of our life. Yes. So yes. Uh, it, it's definitely been a massively rewarding commitment to shift every crevice of my life through grace. Absolutely. I, lo I love that. That is so powerful. And I appreciate you sharing both sides to the, the, your speaking engagements, working well in business and, and just operating from a place of, of grace on from a personal note. And both of those together are, are powerful. Thank you very yeah. much. What is the next evolution 
that you see on the horizon for you and business? What's something that you're looking forward to that, and I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to put a caveat that not, maybe not something that you're working on yet. So one of those things that's yeah. out there that you, you're looking to reach for and you may not even have told anybody yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So there, there's, you know, a couple, two things. Okay. One is uh, the, the really big thing that I haven't started working on, but I've been talking about it forever is a book. Okay. And uh, part of that's because I've, I've, I feel like there's so many different stories I want to tell. I was like, what story do I want to tell first? And uh, so uh, I have a book coach, and one of the things we've talked about is is talking about my story around burnout, mm-hmm. because a lot of people are in burnout, and a lot of people struggle to succeed despite their burnout. So um, I think that's that's what's on the not too distant horizon. Beautiful. And and part of that was because I've been uh, I've been you know, ready to teach some new work around leadership for entrepreneurs, okay. uh, really understanding how leadership as an influencer, as a thought leader, as a leader of your business can dramatically change your success level hmm. and, you know, take you out of chasing clients and into being a magnet for more clients and opportunities. So that is actually coming out uh, in a couple of months, this new uh, way in which we're working, what's called the Awaken Leadership Lab. So it's really helping people in the lab, you know, have a place to deal with the things that you're facing that you don't know what to do about because yeah. these are conversations you've never had to have before because you're in a whole new place of your business. So that's another thing that it's been kind of on the uh, fringe for quite some time. Mm-hmm. And I've done a lot of this work with private clients, but it's really exciting to bring it out and allow more people to have access to it. Well, that I can't wait to see. I'm a, I'm, my, my major is leadership in grad school, and I'm, I'm, oh, I'm a leadership guy, so I, I'd love to see that. And um, I, I have to make sure that I share that when, when it's ready to be shared. So okay. thank you so much for That's that. I'm, I'm excited to hear that. Most important of all, how can people find you and reach out to you for support, and how can they support you? Yeah, well, the the resource I shared earlier is a great way in. You can also head over to our website, melaniebenson.com. Be sure to join us uh, listening into the podcast each week. I'm always so honored to hear someone like yourself is listening. And, um, you know, we're tackling a lot of the things that people deal with at each stage of their business. And I'm always excited to hear what's up for you so I can create a unique podcast episode dealing with your biggest challenges. We have a community that we've been building, Aaron. I don't know if you heard about it, the uh, Amplifier Success Community. So yes. great place to share what's up for you and what you're dealing with and what your challenges are so that we know how to support you better. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Melanie. I want to take a minute and just say thank you for, I, I know how busy things can get, so Thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come and share so many big pieces of wisdom for us, for sharing your resource. Um, I'm going to link all of it in our show notes. And as you mentioned, I'm a listener of your show. And I know that recently you had an episode about, you know, knowing when to say no to things. And you were discussing (laughs) about how many events and things that you'd like to do that you weren't (laughs) able to. So for you to actually say yes to come on Unbreakable Success, I can't tell you how much I appreciate and and I'm honored by it. So thank you for being here. Um, everyone, make sure you go to MelanieBenson.com and thank her. Make sure you grab her resource and, and take full advantage of the amazing service she provides because she's a true true gem and a professional and knows, knows what she's doing, as you can tell. So, Melanie, we're going to talk soon. We will be in touch very soon. Thanks so much for being thank you. here. Thank you for inviting me. Bye, everybody. Hey there, it's Aaron. Thank you so much for being here. I want to ask you something. If if you got something valuable from this episode, uh, I'm going to ask you to do two things. Number one, make sure you're subscribed so you get notified every single time I release an episode. And number two, please make sure you stop by AaronKeithHawkins.com. There's always some free training for you to make sure you're creating the success you actually want in your business and in your life. I'm so fortunate to be able to share with you and I'm grateful that you're here. Thank you for being part of this family and I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Take care.